In a previous video, you saw method overloading in C-sharp, and in this video, I want to show you constructor overloading, which is really just the same concept, but with constructors. So this shouldn't be a ton of new information. I've got a C-sharp uh, .NET core project open here. I've got program, I've got my entry point, and all it's doing is, is press any key to exit, waiting for a key, and then closing. So just a little bit of a template to get us started. Let's pretend we're making like a jukebox application. Maybe it's in a video game or it's, in, it's like Spotify. We're making a desktop application. So what I'm going to want is a class that could represent music tracks. So I'm going to call it music track, add it to the project. And um, we could store a lot of things in the music track, but let's, let's store the track title and the artist name and the album name. We could store like genre and BPM and all sorts of things here. And we, we've seen before how to create a constructor where we specify the access modifier and then we have to specify music track, uh, same name exactly as our class. And that's how we define this as a constructor. And so a constructor gets called when we instantiate this class. And so we can create a, a default constructor that's not terribly helpful where we're just gonna set the track title to unknown title uh, let's set the artist name to unknown artist and the album name to unknown album. And I'm going to create, just so that we can see something, since we're not actually playing music, let's create a display track info method. And to save us some time, I'm just going to copy and paste something in here. So this is just going to print out the track title with a little bit of a banner and then um, the artist track and album. And I'm going to make sure that I bring in static system dot console here to make those errors go away. Uh, ah, and I've made a typo clearly. So artist name, let's change that to artist name. Those go away. No, no overloading so far. We're just creating a track that has um, a constructor that takes no parameters. And we can flip over to program and we could use that. Let me make sure I save this file. Flip back here. Let's create a music track. Let's call it track one, new music track. And let's do track one uh, and ask it to display its track info. So this will not be useful information because we haven't given it. Uh, the album name or the artist name or the, the album name. So it's just using those defaults that we set. Unknown artist, unknown title, unknown album. So this is useful if we wanted to construct a track for some reason and we just didn't know any of that information yet. But we can overload this constructor. So by overloading, I mean that we can create another constructor and this is valid as long as the parameters that we define here differ from the parameters that we defined here. So we can't do music track uh, with no parameters, but we could do a music track that takes one parameter, string track title. And we'll just do this line of code, but instead of putting the default in, we will put the real track title. And we could grab these two lines of code and drop them in. So we, we still don't know the artist name, we still don't know the album name. So we flip back to program, and we could test this out. So I'm gonna add a little bit of space here, right line, and then I'm going to create a second track. And this time I'm going to use the other constructor. And we can see uh, if I hit, uh, let's delete these parentheses. If I open a parenthesis, I can see that the IntelliSense is telling me that there are actually two options here. I can either use the default that has no parameters, or uh, I can use the one that takes one track title as the only parameter. So, you know, I've been listening to um, time by Childish Campino recently. So let's just throw time in here and display track two. So track one, unknown, and then track two, we've got actually time printing out, but we still don't know the artist or the album. So let's flip back to music track and let's create another constructor. So again, the key difference here for overloading is that the number of parameters or the type of the or type of parameters is different than the other constructors. So we can do string track title, and if I don't add any other parameters, this is going to 
complain at me because we already have one that takes a single string parameter. So if I hover over the error, yep, music track already has a constructor with the same parameter types. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's take in the artist name and let's take in the album name. We're gonna do the same structure, pass in the artist name, pass in the album name, and then we can flip back to program and we could go ahead and create another track. So I'm gonna copy this structure, call this track three, and if I delete the parentheses here and start typing again, we're gonna see now there are three autocompletes suggested to us from IntelliSense, and the third one here takes those three parameters we just defined. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's pull another track from Spotify that I've been listening to. Uh, circle the drain by Soccer Mommy, and the album is Color Theory, and display track number three. So there we go. Unknowns, time with the album and artist missing, and circle the drain with uh, all the information filled in. So constructor overloading is useful when you have an object that you wanna construct, but maybe you don't have all of the information or there's some defaults that you wanna apply. It gives you a little bit of flexibility when you're constructing your object to be able to have multiple ways to construct it. In this case, we have one that has no parameters, one that has one parameter, and one that has three. So super similar to method overloading because a constructor is really just a special type of method.